seven o'clock we call a meeting to order for public safety and human services. Um, do we have anybody here that would like to speak on a non-agenda item? No. Okay. Um, now I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion <coughs> carries. Okay, now we'll move on to approval of resolution and ordinances. For a, uh, do I have a motion to approve ordinance 2020040? Just make a motion to approve ordinance 2020004. Okay. Um, now we have a couple of people that would like to speak on that tonight, and the first one is Jay Hotfields. Do you want to come up and sit down? Here's your name and address. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Jay Hockmuth. My address is 2888 Osmondson Road. I've been a Fitchburg resident for 33 years. And I'm here tonight for just some very brief remarks uh, concerning this ordinance. Uh, I want to encourage this committee tonight to recommend to the council that it be approved. The uh, Finance Committee just moments ago in a 2 0 vote recommended approval. The uh, CETA Authority uh, last Thursday, I believe it was, recommended three to two against adoption. Um, perhaps they weren't aware of some of the issues that will be brought to your attention in the councils tonight. But um, just a couple of brief remarks. Um, we really applaud the city of Fitchburg for uh, being proactive in trying to develop an ordinance that will walk a fine line between um, no regulation of these short-term rentals and over-regulation of them. And we think this, uh, what's been proposed right now, is a good starting point and actually good enough to adopt, hopefully, uh, tonight by the council. Um, secondly, I have a couple of, I have three copies of a um, remarks that Michael Ercito, the president of the Seminole Forest, would have handed out and provided if he was here tonight, but he's out of state. So I volunteered to bring those to your attention. Um, and they go into great detail. I'm not going to get involved in that right now, but suffice to say that Seminole Forest had some very bad experiences with one of these uh, short-term rentals uh, last summer for a five-month period um, due to one of the primary reasons was the people who were renting it weren't occupants of the property. They were renting it solely for purposes of rental, and it brought in a lot of parties and a lot of complications. Um, as a result of that, the Seminole Forest Neighborhood Association has proceeded with the process to amend our deed covenants. And uh, that process is now completed and we're in the final stages of getting that recorded. Um, and so Seminole Forest is going to have some regulations for the Seminole Forest neighborhood. But we really hope that this uh, effort involving this uh, ordinance also goes forward and gets adopted. Um, Today, I sent an email to the city attorney to confirm that the ordinance being proposed will <coughs> not limit um, limit uh, neighborhood associations from perhaps in some areas being more restrictive. And I, I talked to the mayor earlier today on an unrelated matter mentioned this. He thought that would probably be the case. There's a number of examples where neighborhood associations have the ability to become more restrictive than the city. So that's the only caveat we have on supporting this and we believe in all likelihood there isn't going to be a problem. Can't find any language in there that would suggest that. So that's it. Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we have Laura Olson. Step up. Good evening. I've prepared a three-minute statement. My name is Laura Olson. I live at 2958 Greencrest Court in the Seminole Forest subdivision of Fitchburg. I've been a Fitchburg resident since 2001. I'm a Madison native and specifically chose Fitchburg as the city in which to raise my children, who are now 13 and 18. I am in favor of the proposed ordinances on short-term rental licenses and regulation. For the last 26 years, I've worked as a legal research librarian, and thus I appreciate the complexities of the developing and intersecting state, county, and local legal requirements relating to STRs. I applaud the city for your proactive approach in promoting ordinances designed to balance the, ver the needs of various constituents. My purpose for being here tonight is based on my direct personal experience living immediately adjacent to a short-term rental in the Seminole Forest neighborhood. I would like to share with you what my neighbors and I experienced over a five-month period as well as my overall observations and related concerns. In March 2019, the home immediately adjacent to me was purchased by a family owning multiple 
short-term rentals. They did not use the home as their primary residence. They marketed the home as being able to accommodate up to 16 guests at a time. The very first rental weekend, we witnessed increased traffic, loud car doors, Ubers at all hours of the night, uh, noise, trash in the street, and so forth. Uh, it was like it was on Langdon Street. Each weekend, we dealt with a different group of renters, uh, just repeating the cycle over and over, and we experienced the same recurring issues on our formerly quiet cul-de-sac. Increased noise, traffic, trash, and a very transient feel to our formerly peaceful circle. Had I wanted a home next to a Holiday Inn, I would have purchased a home next to a Holiday Inn. This cycle quickly became frustrating and completely changed the very character of our neighborhood. As a solo parent raising a young teen girl, I felt unsafe leaving her home alone at times. There were drunk golfers, drunk uh, fraternity members, drunk bachelor parties going on in the home next to me, and I feared for her safety at times. To make a long story short, we endured five months of party weekends until we were able to exert enough pressure on the homeowners to sell. The situation was an emotional drain and it impeded our ability to enjoy weekends at home. That's not why I pay over $9,000 a year in property tax, I can tell you that. I feel I owe it to Fitchburg to share my story and forewarn what can happen when short-term rentals are unregulated and unlicensed. These folks have moved on. I could easily wash my hands of this situation, but I feel I owe it to Fitchburg residents such as my neighbor and my sister to share what I experienced firsthand. This is the public safety meeting. In addition to the inconvenience this caused me and my neighbors, the renters were at risk. There were public safety issues going on for them. Uh, the home was not initially registered with the county health department, was rented to more people than the home could safely accommodate, and the pool and hot tub were not in compliance with county health department regulations. Some neighborhoods have restrictive covenants that can be modified to prevent short-term rentals. As Jay indicated, our neighborhood has just recently undergone that process. That is an expensive and time-consuming process, and not all neighborhoods in Fitchburg have that uh, ability. Calling the police each and every time a short-term rental situation is out of hand is also not a long-term situation. I know our law enforcement's too busy chasing stolen cars, among other things. <laughs> the city needs a permanent solution to balance the rights of all involved parties. A short-term rental in a vacation community it has a very different impact than a short-term residential short-term rental in a residential community. Also, residential homes purchased solely as income properties for short-term rental and not used as a primary residence are very different than owner-occupied homes used for intermittent short-term rental for periodic supplemental income. Opponents of the proposed ordinance suggest that the city of Fitchburg does not need another layer of regulation. At the CETA meeting last week, that was very clear. This was called a knee-jerk reaction and they talked about emails from disgruntled residents one of those people being me. Uh, regulations are designed to address changing societal situations, including new and evolving business models, such as short-term rentals. The ordinance language is not unreasonable. It's designed to balance the rights of homeowners, neighborhoods, and renters, and require that rental proprietors offer safe lodging. Based on my personal experience with an adjacent short-term rental, I encourage the city to enact local ordinances to protect all impacted constituents. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Do you have questions? Do you bring up questions? Not for the speakers. I, the, we had pre, just, the only thing I'm worried about is just that under the short-term rental in the license requirement, it does call out that the building inspector will inspect each location. I don't know if you have, I, I did not reach out to the building inspector. I worry about his capacity. Can we commit to doing that? I mean, or does he have concerns? I just, I wish I would have reached out to him and I did not. But I don't know if anyone has heard any. Right. You know, the only thing that I, was my concern. The only thing I know is there might be, you know, staffing issues and, and being able to accommodate that, but. Mm -hmm. I, I like the idea and I mm -hmm. understand that it, I mean, I think there should be regulation. I don't agree with of having an extra layer I just it made me nervous because then I can I know that that area is already taxed mm -hmm. for staffing limits that that mm -hmm. was the only thing that made me nervous mm -hmm. well we have a couple more people who are not here that wish to register um, Julia Peterson at 2902 Melissa Circle uh, wishes to register um, in favor of and support of the above matter. Please amend the code of ordinance 
for STR to keep Fitchburg neighbors a community of neighbors, not tourists or Badger game fans. Um, we have Ted Peterson at 2902 Melissa Circle, wish to register in support of the above matter. And Milon Getzkowski of 2898 Melissa Circle, wishes to register only in support of the above matter. So we have those. Um, so if you don't have any questions, should we go ahead and vote for everybody to vote on this? Mm -hmm. Shannon? Good. Sure. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Nay? No. Motion carries. So now we're down to announcements. Our next meeting will be on February 11th, 2020, probably at 7, depending on the agenda for the evening. Now we need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to, sorry. There you go. Good. Motion to adjourn. It'll work. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned at 712.